Hello class, welcome to Connected. In this video, we will talk about the unification of Italy. We will discuss the establishment of Carbonari, role of Joseph Mazzini, the revolution of 1848, role of Count Caver, the Crimean War, and finally the role of Giuseppe Garibaldi. Before we start, let's understand the background context. Will somebody volunteer to read with me? After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, Italy gradually developed into a system of city-states. This system lasted through the Renaissance but began to deteriorate with the rise of modern nation-states in the early modern period. Italy, including the Papal States, then became the site of fights between the major powers, notably the Holy Roman Empire, later Austria, and France. The diplomats of the Congress of Vienna had unanimously decided to restore the countries of Europe to the political setup as it existed before 1789. Thus, Italy was divided into eight small states Piedmont, Lombardy, Venetia, Parma, Modena, Tuscany, Papal States, and Naples. All rulers were restored in most of the states. Lombardy and Venetia were given to Austria. The provinces of Modena, Parma, Tuscany were given over to the autocratic rule of the Austrian princes. Sardinia Piedmont was ruled by an Italian princely house. It finally assumed the leadership of liberating and uniting the country. The center was ruled by the Pope and the southern regions were under the domination of the Bourbon kings of Spain. Moving on class, let us now understand more about establishment of Carbonari. Will someone volunteer to read with me? The natural results of the changed conditions of Italy were deep in widespread discontent. This discontent led the people to fight against autocracy and unify Italy into one nation. They formed a secret committee named Carbonari. The main aim of the Carbonari was to achieve constitutional liberty and to drive the aliens out of Italy. The revolutionary fervor of 1848 swept across the peninsula and Charles Albert, the king of Sardinia, provided civil liberties and parliamentary form of government. It was evident that Italians were as interested in nationalism as in liberalism. Moving on class, let us now understand more about Joseph Mazzini. Will somebody volunteer to read with me? Mazzini was an Italian patriot who had spearheaded a national revolutionary movement. He believed that Austria was the greatest opponent of the freedom and unity of Italy. Mazzini joined the Carbonari. He was a great supporter of the republican form of government. Mazzini was not satisfied with the programmer and organization of Carbonari. He was greatly disappointed with the failures of the revolutionaries. His vast experience helped him to find a new organization of the youth of Italy known as Young Italy. The objectives of Young Italy were Austria should be driven out of Italy, Italy should be unified as a nation, Republic should be established in Italy and the constitution of New Italy should be framed by the people. Mazzini believed that the war of Italian independence should be fought by the Italians only. His slogan was Italy for Italians. He wanted to establish a strong and powerful Republican Confederation of Italy by uniting different states. Children, let us now talk about the revolution of 1948. Will somebody else volunteer to read with me? Before the outbreak of the Revolution of 1848 in France, the rulers of the states of Naples, Tuscany, Piedmont and Rome had granted liberal constitutions to the people. In 1846, Pope Pius IX became the ruler of Rome. He was liberal in his political ideas. He accepted the demands of the people and introduced many reforms in the administration. When the revolution broke out in France in 1848, it made a tremendous impact upon the political conditions of Italian states. First of all, Lombardy and Venetia rose in revolt against Austria. The people of Venice established a republic. The rulers of Naples, Tuscany, Piedmont and the Papal States had already granted liberal constitution to their people. The people of the Italian states demanded that their rulers should fight united against Austria, so the Italian states declared war against Austria under the leadership of Charles Albert, the king of Piedmont, Sardinia. The unity of the Italian rulers soon began to dissolve. The Pope was the first to withdraw his army from the battlefield. The rulers of Naples, Tuscany and some other states followed the footsteps of the Pope. The result was that King Charles Albert was defeated by Austria at Novara on 23rd March 1849. He abdicated his throne in favor of his son, Victor Emmanuel III.
Next, let's talk about the Count Camilo Cabor, 1810 to 1861. Will somebody else volunteer to read with me? Italy's reunification or resorgimento, it really means revival, was largely the work of Camillo Cavour. In 1850, he was appointed Minister of Commerce and Agriculture of his native state, Sardinia. In the year 1852, Victor Emmanuel II appointed Count Cavour as the Prime Minister of Piedmont. Count Cavour saw that Sardinia must be developed internally before it could make any moves against the Austrians, because it controlled most of northern Italy and the Bourbons ruled the kingdom of the two Sicilies in the south. To that end, he reorganized Sardinia's treasury, tax system, and banking system and then got foreign loans in order to build railroads and industries. The main aim of Cavour's policy was to drive Austrians out of Italy, so in 1855, he entered the Crimean War on the side of Great Britain and France. Napoleon III agreed to cooperate in driving the Austrians from Italy in return of Savoy and Nice by Sardinia to France. Next, let's discuss the Crimean War 1854-56. Will somebody else volunteer to read with me? Kevor waited for an opportunity when Italy could help the European countries. Fortunately, he got a chance in the Crimean War. Kevor sent the army of Piedmont, Sardinia, and support of England, France, and Turkey against Russia. Kevor was far-sighted and wanted to raise the question of Italy on an international platform. Finally, let's talk about Giuseppe Garibaldi and the reunification of Italy. Will somebody else volunteer to read with me? A great patriot of his time, Garibaldi was also influenced by the ideas of Mazzini and he joined the Young Italy. The people of Sicily had risen in revolt in 1860 against their king, Francis II of Naples. The rebels requested Garibaldi to help them. An army of volunteers was organized at Genoa with 1,000 of them wearing red shirts. Therefore, his revolutionary group was known as Red Shirts. Garibaldi conquered southern Italy, that is Naples and Sicily. By November 1860, the whole kingdom of Francis II had fallen to Garibaldi. He had first intended to reconvert the territory into an independent republic, but was finally persuaded to surrender it to the kingdom of Sardinia. With most of the peninsula now united under a single rule, Victor Emmanuel II, King of Sardinia, assumed the title of King of Italy on 17th March 1861. The unification of Italy was completed in 1870 when Napoleon III was forced to withdraw the French troops from Rome, which had been stationed there since 1849. This was due to the fact that Napoleon had to fight against Prussia and it was necessary to collect troops from everywhere. In 1861, Victor Emmanuel II assumed the title King of Italy. In 1866, Italy got most of Venetia after Prussia defeated Austria. And in 1870, due to another war between Prussia and France, Italy was able to enter Rome and exercise its control. Early in 1871, Rome became the capital of liberated and united Italy. Students, we have now come to the end of this video. Let's recall what you have learned by filling in these blanks. You have one minute to try these out. Well done children, now let's match how many blanks you filled correctly with this answer sheet. So that's it for today. Thank you class and I hope you all had fun learning.